Hi, my name is Tim and I'm a Solutions Engineer at Appvia. Today I'm going to be talking to you about landing zones, but specifically what our landing zone is in Azure. Let's get started. So what is a landing zone? A landing zone is your place in the cloud. It's a well-architected area that follows best practice and allows you to make the most of uh, what the cloud can offer you. Often it's really easy to get started in the cloud, uh, but it can quickly become unmanageable and things like security, uh, repeatability, management all become really challenging. So when you're architecting your uh, landing zone in Azure, there are eight areas that uh, really you need to focus on. Now these come from recommendations uh, that Microsoft have produced and it's uh, really, it's quite opinionated, but sometimes that's good uh, because that, that uh, opinion is based on lots of experience. So the first thing uh, that you need to focus on is uh, your billing and your tenant. So this relates to how you're charged for what you're using in the cloud and uh, also how everything fits together at a top level within your uh, Active Directory uh, or as it is now, Entra ID tenant. Secondly, uh, identity and access management. So this is how people access uh, your environment and have the, the right roles and can access the things that they need to access. Thirdly, resource organization. So this is looking at how you organize your resources uh, so that they're easy to manage and operationally uh, structured correctly. Sorry, fourthly, network topology. So how does this uh, landing zone within the, the cloud fit in with perhaps some on-premise networking that you've got? Uh, how does uh, it connect to uh, the different areas uh, within your landing zone? How do you structure that and keep that secure, but also allow it to expand and grow as your presence in the cloud glows, grows? Fifthly, uh, security. So this is really important. Obviously, uh, using a public cloud is quite different to using an on-premise environment uh, whereby everything is private. In the cloud, uh, it's a public cloud, and therefore, how do you structure that so that it is protected and uh, keeps everything safe and secure? Next, management. So how do you manage what you've created as it grows? Uh, how do you make sure that it's sustainable? Governance. So depending on your organization, there may be specific uh, requirements that uh, you need to deliver uh, for, uh, say, say, ISO 27001 or uh, NIST or those sort of things that are a requirement. Uh, you need to make sure that you put your governance in place and then that you uh, implement it and monitor it. And then finally, automation and DevOps. So this is really how you can unlock uh, scaling. Uh, when you first start, it's quite easy. You've got a small amount of resources that you need to manage. Then as you grow, how do you keep that same pace that you had at the beginning? And that's really where automation and DevOps can really unlock the ability to scale up, do things faster, do things uh, automatically, take out that manual effort. So those are eight areas that uh, the Microsoft recommendations say that uh, we should focus on. There's a lot more information in the, the blog and the Microsoft documentation, so I suggest that you check there uh, to look into more information.